Hello, dear students. During the session, we will explain Chapter 7, History of Development of Astronomy for LH and SE sections. By the end of the session, you will be able to explain the geocentric theory of Aristotle and Ptolemy, explain the heliocentric theory of Copernicus, use Kepler's laws, state the contributions of Galileo and Newton to astronomy, and define astrophysics. Astronomy is the science that studies the position, motion, structure, and evolution of celestial bodies like planets, stars, galaxies, and so on. Since ancient times, the knowledge of the constellations was essential. Astronomy was born from the necessity of everyday life. Let's talk about the geocentric theory of Plato and Aristotle. The universe is spherical. All celestial bodies, including Earth and all the other planets, are spherical. Earth is immobile and it is at the center of the universe. Any celestial motion must be circular and uniform around Earth. Uniform means at constant speed. The fixed stars are the farthest from Earth and are carried by a sphere whose period of revolution is one day. 24 hours. As for the geocentric Ptolemaic system, Earth is immobile and is at the center of the universe. The Moon and the Sun move uniformly along circular orbits, having the Earth as center. And the other planets move uniformly along small circles called epicycles. The center of each epicycle moves along a circular orbit around the Earth, and this orbit is called the deferent. Now for the heliocentric theory of Copernicus, the Sun is immobile and is at the center of the spherical universe. Earth is a planet like any other planet. The planets are carried by solid and transparent spheres, and each planet is driven by the uniform rotational motion of its sphere around the sun. The fixed stars are carried by a sphere that has the greatest radius. The period of revolution of a planet around the sun increases with the distance that separates it from the sun. This means that the further the, the planet, the greater the period. The Earth revolves around the sun in one year and at the same time rotates on itself in 24 hours. The moon is a satellite of Earth and has a uniform circular motion around it. And finally, the planets are located around the Sun in the following order from closest to farthest. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Now let's remind you about a fundamental difference between the heliocentric system and the geocentric system. For the heliocentric system, the Sun is immobile and is at the center of the spherical universe. But for the geocentric system, the Earth is 
immobile and is at the center of this spherical universe. Let's repeat this using the animation. For the heliocentric system, you see the sun is at the center of the universe and the earth is orbiting around the sun. For the geocentric system, the earth is at the center of the universe and the sun is orbiting around the earth. Now here, let's talk about three of the most important laws in the history of astronomy. Kepler's laws. In 1601, the Danish astronomer Tycho Brahe died leaving all his paperwork to his assistant, Johannes Kepler. And after long calculations and research, Kepler published his three empirical laws. These laws give a complete description of the motion of the planets. First law, the planets move along ellipses around the sun that is at one of the foci. Because for an ellipse, we have two foci. The sun occupies one of these foci. As for the second law, the velocity of the planet decreases as the distance between the sun and the planet increases and vice versa. Let's use this animation to explain it. Take a look at, for example, this planet. I will call it the blue planet. When it gets closer to the sun, its velocity increases. And when it gets away from the sun, its velocity decreases. The same, of course, for the red planet. Now for the third law, the period of revolution of the planet increases with its average distance from the sun. If we take a look at what I called the blue planet, we see the period of this of revolution of this planet is smaller than the period of revolution of the red planet. And at the same time, we can notice that the blue planet is closer to the, to the sun from the red planet. So the closer the planet, the smaller the period of revolution. Two of the greatest scientists in the history of astronomy are Galileo Galilei and Isaac Newton. Convinced by Copernicus' heliocentric theory, Galileo looked for the experimental proof. And in 1609, he made the first telescope designed for astronomical observations. As for Isaac Newton, and after a few years in 1687, he established the law of universal gravitation. This law states that two bodies attract each other with a force that is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance that separates them. Now for the development of astronomy in the 18th and 19th centuries, Edmund Halley detected the motion of the stars and hence put an end to the concept of sphere of fixed stars. Then in 1781, William Herschel discovered the seventh planet in the solar system Uranus. And in the middle of the 19th century, 
Astrophysics was born. Astrophysics is the science that studies the constitution, the physical properties, and the evolution of the stars. Now let's do an exercise. The planets are located around the sun in the following order from closest to farthest. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. And in the table below, the names of certain planets are missing. And the periods of revolution are given in days and in years. Complete this table. To do so, we have to start by arranging the periods given in the table in the increasing order, from smallest to greatest. Then, we write what is given in the text. So, we put the planets in the same order. And using these two pieces of information, and applying Kepler's third law, then we can correspond each planet to its period of revolution. During this session, we learned to compare the geocentric theory of Aristotle and Ptolemy to the heliocentric theory of Copernicus, to use Kepler's laws and to state Newton's laws of universal gravitation. Now here I will leave you with the astronomy timeline, references and links. See you next time in another session. Thank you for watching.